All right, so in this lesson, we're going to discuss factoring trinomials in the form of x squared plus bx plus c. You'll notice there's no a here, and that's because in this lesson, all of the examples are going to have an a value of positive 1. So what does it mean to factor? When you factor, you're looking for the pieces that multiply together to give you a product. So for an example, in a trinomial, the pieces that multiply together to give you a product are binomials. For example, if I write here x plus 2 times x plus 3, and we use the process called FOIL, right? We multiply these together. We say, okay, first x times x is x squared. Outer x times 3 is 3x. Inner 2 times x is 2x. And last 2 times 3 is 6. And then we combine like terms. We get x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay, that's what happens when we multiply together these two binomials. So to factor the trinomial x squared plus 5x plus 6 would be to undo that process so that we can arrive back at the original binomials that are the factors of this trinomial. So that's what it means to factor. And in this example, we're going to look at, or in this lesson, we're going to look at three different cases, three different examples of how this works. So let's take a look at our first example here, which is this one here, x squared plus bx plus c. Now you notice that I put these plus signs in blue because that's the key to this first case. In this first case, everything is positive. So our b value is positive and our c value is positive. And so where that comes from is a bino two binomials that are both addition binomials. In other words, this comes from a binomial uh, multiplying x plus some number times x plus some number. Okay, and the way I know that is that if my c value is positive, okay, when you think about multiplying, the c value comes from multiplication. If you think about multiplying, there's only two ways that you can multiply and end up with a positive number, and that would be positive times positive or negative times negative. Okay, then if my b value is positive, that means the two numbers that got multiplied together were positive. So in the case where b and c are both positive numbers, then our binomials were both x plus. Now I'm going to show you how to use that concept to factor these trinomials here. So we take a look at this first example here, x squared plus 8x plus 15. We see that our b value is positive and our c value is positive. So this gives us x plus something times x plus something. So how do we find the numbers that we need to use? Well, we're going to look at our C value here. So if you look back to this example here where we foiled, our C value, 6, came from multiplying 2 times 3. So that's how we got this 15. We need to think what two numbers can I multiply together that give me 15. Well, the factors of 15 are 1 times 15 and 3 times 5. So now if I look here at my b value of 5x, where did that came from? That came from, where did that come from? Sorry. That came from 3x plus 2x. And that 3x plus 2x came when we did outer and inner from the FOIL process. So that involves these same two numbers. So notice that 2 plus 3 is 5 and 2 times 3 is 6. So that's how this is going to work. We take a look here, our c value is 15. We can get 15 by doing 1 times 15 or 3 times 5. And we also need to pick whichever pair of numbers here not only multiply together to give us 15, but they add together to give us 8. And that will be 3 and 5. So we just plug in a 3 and a 5 here, and that is our solution. x squared plus 8x plus 15 factored gives us the two binomials x plus 3 times x plus 5. Just to prove it, let's go ahead and FOIL. x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times 5 is 15. And we see here that 5x plus 3x is 8x. So we end up back where we began with x squared plus 8x plus 15. 
Remember here, we're factoring, so this is our goal. Our goal is to arrive at the two binomials that are the factors of this trinomial. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this second example here. If you think you can handle it on your own, go ahead and try it without me. Pause, and then come back and see if you got it right. So we have x squared plus 7x plus 12. Notice again that my b value and c value are both positive. So this is going to be x plus something times x plus something. So what are my numbers? Well, let's take a look at our c value here. It's 12. So we need two numbers that multiply together to make 12. So that could be 1 times 12. That could be 2 times 6. Or that could be 3 times 4. Now, not only do they need to multiply together to make 12, but they also need to add together to make 7. So which are they? You guessed it, 3 and 4. So we plug in our 3 and our 4 here. And this is our solution. x squared plus 7x plus 12 factored is x plus 3 times x plus 4. Again, on a quick foil, x times x is x squared. x times 4 is 4x. 3 times x is 3x. Hold on, backtrack here. And 3 times 4 is 12. So I get x squared plus 7x plus 12. Again, this is our goal here. All right. All right. Our second type of case, our second example. Notice now here in the middle, I have here x squared minus bx plus c. So notice that my c value is still positive. And now my b value is negative. Okay. So where does that come from? Well, again, my c value is positive, and that comes from multiplication. So in the, in the last example, we did positive times positive is positive. What's the other way to multiply and get positive? That would be negative times negative is positive. And that's how we end up with a negative B value. So when our B value is negative, but our C value is positive, that means that our binomial multiplication is X minus something times X minus something. Okay. So let's take a look at this example here. The rest works out just the same. So if we look here, x squared minus 11x plus 24, we see a negative b value and a positive c value. So we know this is going to be x minus some number times x minus some other number. Now, this works out the same way, except now we know that our two numbers are actually negatives, right? So we're still thinking about two numbers that multiply together to make 24. We know they're negative numbers. So what are the factors of 24? And the factors of 24 are 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. So what are two numbers here? And imagine, right, they're, they're all negative, correct? What are two numbers here that multiply together to give me positive 24 and add together to give me negative 11? That would be negative 3 and negative 8, correct? So it's 3 times 8 is 24, and negative 3 plus negative 8 is 11. And we don't need to put the negatives in. They're already there. So just put a 3 here and an 8 here. These first examples here, and in this example here, it doesn't really matter where you put the 3 or where you put the 8 because they're both minus. In the first one, they were both plus, and this one, they're both minus. So it doesn't really matter where you put your numbers okay on a quick foil x times x is x squared in the back negative 3 times negative 8 is positive 24 and in the middle I have a negative 3x and a negative 8x and when I combine that together I get negative 11x all right next example again I encourage you to pause and see if you can get it on your own so we have a negative b and a positive c so that means we have x minus some number times x minus some number. Again, to look and think about two numbers that multiply together to give me positive 42, and when I add them together, I get negative 13. So I'm not going to go with 1 and 42. That doesn't make sense. Or not with 2 or 2 and 21. Or 3 and 14 no 
How about a six and seven? What's six plus seven? 13. Six times seven, 42. So our numbers are negative six and negative seven. All right, again, if you need to test it out, go ahead and foil it and make sure you got that right. Let's move on to the third example. Now notice in here, I've got x squared plus or minus bx minus c. Now a big difference here is, so far c has always been positive. In this case, c is negative. Now let's think about how you get a negative number when you multiply. The only way you can multiply two numbers together, get a negative number, is if one of those numbers is positive and the other number is negative. So when your C value is negative, that means you have X plus some number times X minus some number because positive times negative is negative. And the reason why we have plus minus BX over here is because in this case, B could be positive or B could be negative. Depends on um, the absolute value of your positive or negative numbers. So let's take a look at this example here. We got X squared plus two X minus 15. Notice we have a positive B and a negative C. So this is gonna be X plus something times X minus something, okay? And so now I have to think of two numbers that multiply together to make 15. And we can think very simply, well, we have one and 15 and we have three and five, right? But now think about this. Know that one of our numbers is going to be positive and the other one's going to be negative. What happens when you add a positive and a negative? You actually end up subtracting, correct? So in this case, you're not going to see which one of these numbers add to make two, but which ones of these numbers subtract to make two. So we see here that three and five fit the bill. Three times five is 15 and five minus three is two. Now the key here, Whereas before, you could put these numbers wherever you want it, it didn't matter. Now it does matter. Because we need, when we combine the two middle terms, we need it to end up with a positive 2x. And the way you do that is very simple. Whatever the middle term is, whatever the b is, whatever sign the b is, that's where you put the bigger number. So my b value is positive, so my 5, my bigger number, has to go next to the plus sign. So we have x plus five times x minus three. And this one, the order does matter. So when we FOIL, we get x squared minus three x plus five x minus 15. And when we combine like terms, we get x squared plus two x minus 15. Very important here, order is important. Had I switched the five and the three, I would have ended up with x squared minus 2x minus 15. All right, next example. Again, try it on your own if you think you got it. We got here x squared minus 3x minus 40. Notice now that b and c are both negative. So this is still going to be x plus some number times x minus some number. So let's go ahead and think about 40. What are two numbers that multiply together to make 40, but when you subtract, Remember, because one is positive, one is negative, right? So when you subtract, you end up with a three. And that would have to be five and eight. So five times eight is 40, and eight minus five is three. Question is, where do you put it? Well, notice that by my B value is negative. So that means my greater of these two numbers needs to go next to a negative sign. So the eight has to go here, and the five has to go here. All right. So I have some examples here for you to try on your own. You should go ahead and pause the video, work these out, and then unpause to check and see if you got the right answer. All right, so let's go. Number seven here, x squared plus 15x plus 56. I see that b and c are both positive. So I know that this is gonna be x plus something times x plus something. So x plus times x plus. I look here, I've got my c value is 56 and my b value is 15. 
So I have to think of two numbers that multiply together to make 56 and add together to make 15. And that would be 7 and 8. So this factors out to be x plus 7 times x plus 8. All right, number 8, x squared minus 8x plus 12. So notice that my c value is positive, but my b value is negative. That means in this case, we're doing x minus some number times x minus some number. Okay, again, I have to think of two numbers that multiply together to make 12 and add together to make negative 8. We know because they're both going to be negative, right? So if I think 3 times 4, no, those add together to make 7. How about 2 and 6? Well, 2 times 6 is 12, and 2 plus 6 is 8. So there, that's our answer there. Okay. Number 9. So we have x squared plus 6x minus 27. So we see that our c value here is negative. So that means, remember, the only way you can make negative is positive times negative. So one of these binomials is x plus, and the other binomial is x minus. So now, two numbers that multiply together to make 27, and since we're dealing with opposite signs here, subtract to make positive 6. Okay, and what would that be? Well. 9 times 3 is 27, and 9 minus 3 is 6. And since my b value is positive, that means my bigger of these two numbers, my larger of these two numbers, has to go next to the plus sign. So it's going to be x plus 9 times x minus 3. Next example, x squared minus 5x minus 36. I see that my c value is negative, so I know, again, that one of these is an x plus, and the other one is an x minus. So, again, two numbers that multiply together to make 36, and when I subtract, I end up with 5. And this one's kind of easy. What's 9 times 4? 36. What's 9 minus 4? 5. And again, since my b value is negative, that means that the greater of my two numbers needs to go next to a negative sign. So the 9 has to go here, and the 4 has to go here. So now this last example here looks trickier, but it really isn't. Okay? Because this y is just an extra thing. You're going to see how easy it is. But you could treat this as if the y wasn't even there. So now notice, b is positive and c is positive. Correct? So I know that I have here x plus something times x plus something. So for now, let's ignore the y's, so you can see how easy this is. So I have to think of two numbers that multiply together to make 32 and add together to make 12. You got it yet? That's right, 4 and 8. 4 times 8 is 32, and 4 plus 8 is 12. So I can just put a 4 here and an 8 here. Now, how do I get this y and this y squared involved? All I got to do is stick them on the end here. So instead of this being x plus 4, it's actually x plus 4y. And instead of this being x plus 8, it's actually x plus 8y. And when I FOIL, you'll see I got x times x is x squared. x times 8y is 8xy. 4y times x is 4xy. And 4y times 8y is 32y squared. Okay, that's an ugly y. Let's go ahead and fix that y. Y. <laughs> and when I combine like terms, I get x squared plus 12xy plus 32y squared. All right, I hope you understand factoring trinomials in the form of x squared plus bx plus c.